What's going on everybody? Welcome back to this episode of G4 Outdoors. Today we're going to be going over the Springfield Armory Echelon. Stick around. Well, here's a little story about two friends that came together And we started up a YouTube just to talk about whatever We're on a boat catching big bass and smashing them cats From review videos to just making you laugh Cause we got guns, we got knives, we got fishing, we got hunting We got everything you like, so hit that subscribe button We're in the outdoors, doing things that we love We're talking guitars, girls, green grass, and guns Hey, before we get started, if you guys would please hit the like button, leave a comment down below, hit the subscribe button, it really helps us out in the long term of this channel, buying ammo, buying guns, everything that goes along with this channel, it really helps us out if you guys would support us on that. Anyways, today we have the new Springfield Armory Echelon. Today is July 13th, this gun came out on July 12th. So this is the first day shooting this gun. This is the uh, second day of me holding this gun. Bought it yesterday. Uh, bought it for $50 under retail, so came in right at $630. It comes with two magazines, two 17 round magazines. It comes with two extension plates for your magazines. So you can have two 20 round magazines coming with this. I'm super impressed with the machining and all of the stippling that they've done on this gun. Here on the handle, we have super nice stippling on the handle right here where you're this little piece of your hand will rest right here. Uh, everything on here is ambidextrous, so we have nice stippling right here. Uh, stippling in front of the trigger, stippling underneath here. We have a really nice undercut on the trigger right here, on the trigger guard. So you get a really nice purchase on here. There's two extra straps for the back right here, depending on the size of your hands, and this is super ergonomically designed like this with the hump right here. So fits really nice into the end of the hand. Uh, I do have smaller hands and this really fits into my hand just right. So if you have bigger hands, you might want to stick the extra large back strap on here. But going on with the stippling again, on the takedown lever right here, we have stippling on that. Stippling up here where your fingers are going to rest and for some reason, stippling right up here on the uh, guide rod. We do have a Picatinny rail here on the bottom to mount your flashlights or scopes, anything you like. On top we have a, this is a pre-cut, pre-milled for a red dot sight. Something cool on this is it does come with different dowels that you can put into these spots up here. So you can use pretty much any red dot sight that you want to. You're not going to be confined to one different model of red dot sight that's going to fit on your gun. You can pretty much go out and buy any one of these red dot sights and put on here. I believe they say up to 30 different kinds of red dot sights by manufacturers, brands, or whatnot. Yeah. On here, rem very, very reminiscent of the big dot, red dot sights. We have the U-mount with the dot up here up front. This is not tritium. I don't even think it's glow in the dark because I was eyeballing it last night. And you know, it wasn't, wasn't really impressive up here on the front sight. If, you, if it's backlit, the front sight went out of focus completely, just darkened out. But during the light, if you're out in the light, it's a very, very noticeable uh, yellow dot up there so the sights on this is is really nice to pick these sights up let me see if I can get that to you so the sights are really nice to pick up on there you go uh, really nice to pick up on I'm excited to put a red dot on here I prefer to run these this isn't my favorite sight, so I prefer to run a red dot over these right here. If these were standard square post, uh, it would be a lot easier for me to pick up and shoot. Now this does have a pretty much a flat bladed trigger on here. I do like the flat bladed triggers on guns over the curved, curved shoes. Uh, this does have a trigger safety on it, just like a Glock safety. Uh, I got a little paddle up here. One thing uh, that I've noticed so far, I think that on the Springfield Hellcats, they, uh, you can hear some people complaining about this, but if you don't get a full purchase on this trigger, like I think I got a pretty good grip on the trigger, but if you push it over to the left, which obviously I seem to do because I have felt this, get my big old fingers out of the way. So you see you push this paddle in and when you push the paddle in, there's another little piece right here that disappears and allows the trigger to be shot. But if you push this over to the left a little bit, you can see that that safety is not completely disengaged and it kind of falls over a little bit. But if you get a full purchase on your trigger, a full purchase on your trigger and pull straight back, you're not going to have any problem and you're not going to notice that. But if you're kind of a little, 
laxing in your grip or your finger trigger, then you're going to probably feel that little hiccup right there. Not a big deal. Just learn to shoot your gun a little bit better, I suppose. I need to. I guess I need. I guess if I had longer fingers, it would probably help out on that as well. See that flinch? Uh, but coming up to sight. No. I'm gonna have to learn this gun a little bit as far as the uh, level of the gun. Pulling this up to sight is pretty good. Uh, I'm a little bit off left to right, but as far as coming up and point of aim, uh, I can get comfortable with this really quick. That was a. Uh, that takes just a little bit to, to find that target down there, but after a while, you know, if you own this gun, 100 rounds, you're going to be just fine. We're going to go fire in the hole. Now, I don't literally mean that they went overboard, but they really went overboard on the slide cuts on this. We have front serrations, rear serrations, and something that's totally awesome is this uh, grip back here. Look how big these ears stick out. Really easy to grab onto. So you're... At any time, you're not going to be wanting for anything on here to grip onto because these are very aggressive slide cuts. I really, really like it. And not only are they slide cuts, they've actually milled a lot of that out. So there are some weight saving measures on here. The echelon is uh, it's kind of a military language, echelon. Echelon, definition, a level of rank in an organization or profession or society military a form of troops ships aircraft or vehicles in parallel rows with the end of each row projecting further than the one on the front so from the get-go they have designed this gun to be a duty gun a battle weapon and i think that they've really succeeded on that i didn't mention this on the bottom we do have a a slight beveled magwell which really helps for putting the magazines in the slide release it's got a pretty aggressive slide release on it. Uh, if it's in your holster, it's not going to be digging into you. But while it's on the, while you're holding the gun, it's a pretty aggressive slide release. So you're not going to be missing that. Something I'm noticing as well, we do have a chamber indicator, loaded chamber indicator. Got a little red dot right here. Someone didn't say he was going down range. So anyway, I'll be right back with you. Something I'm kind of looking at while I'm cleaning up the floor over here the uh, primers on these that striker fire is knocking the dog snot out of these primers so you're definitely not going to have any problems with light primer strikes on these because it's it's definitely putting a wall up on them and today we are shooting fioki ammo just because it was the cheapest one on the shelf 15 dollars for 50 rounds uh if i hadn't mentioned this is a supposed to be a five pound trigger i put my scale on it Running about 410, 411, uh, got three poles on it. All of them are 410, 411. If you haven't yet, go back and watch my unboxing video. I'll show you that. That broke at 49. And I saw 46 on that, but it's... And we got 410. But yeah, let's send a couple rounds down range. Go do a slow fire on this just to feel the gun out. In the beginning of this, I shot the gun. And that was just for video. Honestly, I don't remember anything about it. It was just for show. So let's dig down and see how this gun really shoots and feels. It's got a lot of, not a lot. It's got nice weight to it. It's not overly heavy, but the stippling on this gun for the weight of this gun is very well matched. I don't know if you heard that. That was a hundred yards at a 12 inch gong got that on the first shot uh, wasn't too snappy felt pretty good yeah not too snappy at all uh, not paying attention to the trigger it it lets off really nice yeah it just feels really nice a nice beaver tail right here fills in the gap really nice on my hand yeah recoil is really nice as a matter of fact, any of you guys that have been to my channel before, let me spend one round here real quick. Yeah, one-handed, the recoil is not bad at all. For you guys that have not been subscribed to my channel, I'm going to bring my partner in here on G4 Outdoors, Andrew, up. See what his initial impressions are on this gun. I 
I like the recoil on it. There's not much to the recoil on this. It's not really snappy like a lot of the Micro 9s that I have, obviously. Obviously! <laughs> the trigger, there is a little bit of mush to it, but it breaks fine. I don't have... The, the trigger, I don't have a problem with at all. It's not phenomenal, but it's good. Yeah, it's, it's good. There's nothing wrong with the trigger at all. Hey, you got pretty big meaty hands. Is this, is this grip filling your palm up all the way? Or are you falling off of it at all? No, this, this fits fine. Like, yeah. I don't have a problem with the way this gun feels. I don't have a problem with the way this gun runs at all. I'm trying to think of something negative to say. I really don't have anything negative to say about it. Yeah, yeah. Ambidextrous mag release. Stippling's nice. It's in all the right spots. It's where you want the stippling to be. I don't, I don't have anything negative to say about it. I think it's a really good gun. Now, as much as I can, freehand, I'm gonna run a five shot group and see how we do on that. That's a, that's a really nice, that's a, that's a really nice group at seven yards. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna get off some a little bit faster, see how fast I can run and keep a decent group with this. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not super comfortable with this gun. First time shooting it, I guess I got one more round left. Maybe two. No, nope, just one. Yeah, so right here was my slow and steady shots. Uh, kind of started giggling around here because it's a super good group uh, going off kind of fast. And like I say, these are my first rounds coming out of this gun, intentional rounds coming out of this gun. Uh, you know, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I know that I can close that up quite a bit with a little bit more practice, but You know, I really like these right here. That's pretty good. That's pretty good All right, I'm gonna get some more practice rounds off on this because in the in the very few amount of shots that I've fired today Were 25. This is a lot more comfortable than my Canik TPS FX9 It's a lot more comfortable than that and that has currently been my the gun that I keep inside my house, it's a lot more comfortable, a lot more ergonomic than that. Uh, if people are comparing these to the SIG P320, this has more ergonomics in the grip than the P320. It's smaller than the P320. Of course, you can make that bigger with the back strap. But the overall size and feel of it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trade my Canik out for this for a while. Uh, put my flashlight on here, a red dot, and I'm going to... I'm going to practice with this and keep it by my bed for a while because I, my initial impressions are, is I like this better than the Canik. I like this better than any Glock on the market. I'm not a big Glock guy at all. I'm a, I'm a big guy, but not a big Glock guy. I'm gonna do a really light grip on it. Yeah, that was a good, uh, that was a really light grip. It did cycle. Yeah, the reliability of this gun is going to be great because that's a super light grip. And like I say, this thing is smacking the snot out of those primers. So in only 30 rounds, it's a super reliable gun. I like it. 
I like it. Anyways, guys, as mentioned before, if you would, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. It goes a long way in helping this channel out and the YouTube algorithms. So anyways, I'm going to be doing some more videos on this. Uh, I'm going to put the red dot on here, a flashlight. See if that helps. So that helps out a lot with the ergonomics of how this thing runs or whatnot. I don't know. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it brought you some useful information on this firearm. If it did, again, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. I'll see you in the next one. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. I just dream of fishing while I'm going through my work day. I listen to my boss, though he's driving me berserk. Eh? Damn it, I can't take much more because my brain is really hurting. And now the bank is always calling and I don't know what to do. And I haven't bought a crankbait since like 1992. But the bass are out there schooling. 